Hey friends, it's Eric again. I'm coming at you with a bonus reading for this week. Um, <clears throat> so this is gonna be a conversation with di the divine feminine, okay? Um, I had a person that I did, someone that I did a personal reading for recently asked me, you know, um, how to detach. Um, she was having difficulty with it. And that inspired me to like just come out here and pull a reading for us divine feminines who are struggling with detachment, who don't really know what it means to get um, a little bit of insight, a little bit of guidance on how to actually do this. Um, uh, for me, detachment came naturally, I guess. And it came through all of the reasons, all of the ways that I had been re-triggered by some things that I thought I had healed. Um, and I know that's happening a lot. The universe is ramping up these triggers for us in, in an effort to heal them. But when I faced these triggers again, this time I just faced it in order to see the truth of the matter. And I started to realize that I needed to stop um, giving to a situation that was not giving back to me. And that is a big message for the divine feminines. And I became, I really, once it wasn't until I um, let, I let go of the idea of this person that I feel this incredible connection with, I had to really let go of the twin flame thing. I had to let go of the divine counterpart thing and say to myself, Eric, you have to be honest. You have to be honest with yourself and you have to choose yourself in this situation. It, it, this is a toxic situation. So you just have to let it go. Um, and I think the biggest, the hardest thing with letting things go is that we feel like it's never gonna come back to us. But the problem is that what we have in our lives right now in relation to toxic situations with our divine masculines, um, what we have is toxic and that's not helping us. It's only hurting us. It's only keeping us in the cycles that we have been in our whole lives. So in order to really heal from it, you have to let go from it. You have to detach from it. And it, I know that's hard to do because, you know, this is our divine masculine. This is supposed to, we're supposed to be loving them unconditionally, but you can't love them unconditionally if you're not loving yourself unconditionally. And you're not loving yourself unconditionally if you're allowing this person to remain in your life and keep this toxic, toxicity, toxicity, is that the word I'm looking for? Yeah. Keep this toxic relationship going. Okay. So I can tell you right now, the biggest the first step in letting go of the situation of detaching from your twin is detaching from the twin flame label, period. Uh, regardless of who this person is, regardless of who anyone is in your life, who is anyone is to you in your life, allowing them to remain as part of your life when toxic situations arrive from this relationship is not healthy for either of you, all right? So what I wanna do I just, I'm going to do kind of like a, a mental snapshot or what is also known as a karmic check-in. But the, the, what the reading I'm going to do today, the, 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 um, the question is, how do we detach? Okay. So I'm going to ask Spirit, Spirit, please make me a clear channel for the Twin Flame Collective. Now, this is um, mostly for the Divine Feminine because um, it's the Divine Feminines that are really being charged with this detachment. Uh, but this is also, this could be for divine masculines that need to detach. This could also be for divine masculines that are watching for their divine feminines and understanding what it is we, why, what, you know, what we're going through right now with this whole detachment thing. Because I know they don't like it. <laughs> I know that they don't like that we're attaching from, detaching from them. But, um, you know, we're detaching so that we can have our space to heal and they're doing the same and they're getting the same thing too. But then that means they have to face themselves. Yeah. So anyway, so this is mainly for the divine feminine, but it is also, it's, these are messages for the whole twin flame collective. All right, spirit. So please bring forward the best messages for the divine feminine at this moment. How do we detach? What do we need to focus on in this detachment? Thank you, Spirit. How do we detach is the question. Thank you so much, Spirit. So I'm going to shuffle one more time. 
And then, all right, I'm gonna cut the deck here. Okay, Divine Feminine. Overall energy, we have, oof, card number 52. This card has been coming up a lot least rate, uh, lately, recently in these, in the personal readings I've been doing. To me, this is the Dominatrix card. Okay, this is control. I'm hearing conformity. Um, inauthenticity is what I'm picking up here for the Divine Feminine. And it's all in the guise of um, trying to fit in. So like what I was saying just now about... Um, Letting go of this twin flame concept. Um, it's been a bit of a trap. I'll have to, I, I, will, I will say that. And I honestly, I believe it. There, there has, it's been a little bit of a trap. Um, this, whole, uh, this whole thing of the twin flame connection and divine partnerships um, and unconditional love. Um, many of us divine feminines have been overlooking a lot of the really... Uh, negative and toxic and painful elements of what we've been experiencing with our divine masculines in an effort to show unconditional love. Um, and what we didn't understand, at least what I didn't understand until this recent bout with this really bad trigger that had been coming up, I didn't understand that I was um, using unconditional love as an excuse to excuse my divine masculine for the things that had happened on his part. Um, and that's not healthy. That is not healthy at all. And it, it, it was when it was that moment when I realized I can still unconditionally love him while setting boundaries for myself because I unconditionally love myself. Okay. So an overall energy here, this is talking to the trap that we've been falling into many of us divine feminines, um, when it comes to unconditional love. Um, and I feel like this is the biggest reason why we're having so much trouble detaching. Um, but I'm also picking up that some of the reason is we're kind of hiding behind unconditional love because we don't want to face the things that we're still struggling with on our own. And another question that this person asked me was how do they create union or manifest union? And I've been saying this consistently since I started this channel, guys, you will not and you cannot come into union with your twin if you are not whole within yourself. So a bit of tough love here, stop hiding behind unconditional love to not face yourself. You have to face yourself. You have to face these triggers. When a trigger comes up, face it head on, like stare it straight in the eyes and say, who are you and why are you here? Why am I triggered by you? What is the core wound that this is representing, that this is reflecting in my life? And do it with intentions of releasing it, okay? Moving forward, do we have eight? Okay. To me, this is the magician. Um, in this deck, there are two, there are two cards that can speak to a magician like energy, but they're slightly different. This is the first one. This is the true like magician from the, um, uh, Tarot deck, the major arcana. And I call this one also the alchemist. There is another card in the deck, um, that's more of like the illusionist. And that's where I see, um, the negative aspects or the, the dark aspects of the magician in the Tarot. We have manipulation, um, doing things for the sake of themselves, blah, 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 that, whatnot, whatever. But here we have the alchemist. And so what I believe this is speaking to for the divine feminine is detachment is necessary for you to really manifest the things that you want in life. And that while that does, yes, include union, that also includes all of the other areas of your life that you wish to have some specific experience. Um, and it's an it's interesting because it, it seems kind of counterintuitive or counterproductive or counterintuitive, but the more you hold on to this attachment to your twin, the more you block your manifesting abilities. And I know it's, I feel some of you are like, what? That makes no sense, but it's true because you're holding on to expectation. You're holding on to um, a specific way that something is supposed to turn out or the way you think it's supposed to turn out. So you have to let that go. And that is a lesson in manifesting right there because you, you, the universe is going to conspire to help you get what you want. But the more you, you hold on to attachments of what it should look like, how it should come to you, blah, 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 the more you block that coming from you. 
coming to you. Okay. So the, the alchemist or the magician here is saying, um, you have to work with the laws of the universe in order to get this union to happen. And the laws of the universe or the laws of the situation are you have to be whole within yourself first. You have to. So you have to take and, and, and honestly, if you're holding on to the uh, the false the, the false representation of your divine masculine that is that you are have been experiencing, if you're holding on to the vision of that form of your divine masculine, if you are um, choosing to push aside the, 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 the awful things that have been going on that have been hurting you, you're still focusing on that version of him instead of seeing that version of him for what he is in this moment and then recognizing the, ver the true person that you know he is and instead placing your focus there. OK, but don't place too much focus. OK, but you because you still need to be detached. But the more you hold on to this negative self or this negative represent false representation of him, the more of that you're going to get. OK, and that's that's the law of attraction right there. What you focus on is what you will get in your life. So instead of focusing on this current image that you see of your divine masculine let that go stop focusing on it stop looking at it stop looking at their social media stop spying if you've been doing like stop trying to get information on them and instead turn the focus inward into what you truly want to see in them and when you do that don't focus on their physical representation right now just create an image in your head of a of an a, a empty astral figure right but and, it project all of the things that you want your divine masculine to embody, the loving aspects, the compassionate aspects, the faithful and honest and, um, you know, and transparent, all of that great stuff that you really do want in a divine partner. Focus on that, but on just a blank astral body. Like, don't give it a form. Don't give it a gender. Like, nothing. Just focus. On, you know what I mean? That will help you to, to, to manifest what you really want. Moving forward, we have card number 28. It's time to become the observer. Okay, here we have the divine masculine, a representation of the divine masculine who's dressed as the fool, um, staring, gazing into this whatever that is like this jar that's whatever that's preserving this this image of the divine feminine and she's reaching out and he sees that she's reaching out but she's he's not really reaching back like he he has this look on his face like oh man i want her to touch me well no that's not true i see it now he's holding this oh wow, i never saw that before and she's reaching towards him He's not really reaching back, but he's still holding this thing and he's staring into it. But what I'm picking up here is divine mass, uh, divine feminine. You have to stop reaching out Just so stop reaching out. Let him gaze at you. You can gaze back at him. Absolutely. But when you're gazing back at him, don't focus on the past. Don't focus on what you've been through. Focus on that, which you really wish to see in him. But you have to take step back and become the observer. OK, because the observer is the point of view from your higher self. Right. So you need to connect with your higher self and just start looking at things and just watching them play out. OK, that's another way that you can facilitate detachment as triggers come up, observe them, see them for what they really are. Understand that this is another opportunity from the universe for you to heal. And then just release it, let it go. OK. It's time to be the observers. It's time to stop taking so much action towards reaching them. And now take, instead turn the action inward into healing yourself, healing the wounds, healing the triggers that come up and observing the situation, the physical situation around you. The feminine energies are receptive anyway. It's not like we're really the ones that should be going. I mean, should is, I don't know if I should, should is the right word, but you know, it's the divine masculine that needs to come to get us right now. It's their turn, really. It's their turn to reach out and say, this is what I want. I want to pursue this with you. We've done that. We have made ourselves known, divine feminine. <laughs> come on. There's no way they don't know how we feel about them right now. 
So now it's their turn. So you have to, uh, so another way of detaching here is just stepping back, zooming out, stepping closer to your higher self, right? The point of view of your, the perspective of your higher self and just observe. Next, ah, card number 27. So we have lust here, we have desire, and that's not a bad thing, but we also have a fatal attraction, okay? And this is speaking to what I, what I was talking about, about, about all the toxicity, okay? We're still very attached to the toxicity. We are still very attached to, in many cases, um, uh, the, the, this, uh, I don't have another way to say it other than this one, this victim mentality. Um, uh, mm, many of us are caught in an ego consciousness that wants to keep this victim mentality going because it's feeding the, the negativity of the ego. And what we instead need to do is balance the ego. We can't kill the ego. There, the, you need the ego. You came to, with, to this life with an ego for a reason. It's meant to help protect you. But um, a lot of us are still stuck in the negative ego mind um, and it's imbalanced. And because of that, it's creating a situation where it's like, it's like we don't want to stop this toxic relationship. And it may be because that is the only interaction you've had with your divine masculine. So you're keeping it going so that you can keep interacting with them without realizing that you need to let that part of them go because that is not the part you're meant to come into union with. And the only way you can come into union with your divine masculine is if you stop this cycle, divine feminine. You have to be the one to stop it for yourself. You can't expect him or her to stop for you. Okay? It's obvious. Like, and it was in my reading. It came out in the reading for this week that I just put out yesterday. I mean, it's come to a point where we have to stop picking the pieces up for them. They need to pick up their own pieces. They need they need this detachment too. They need to have this period where we're not in our in their lives. We're not trying to contact them. We're not trying to see them. We're not trying, you know, we're not paying attention to them anymore so they can get the message. You have please divine feminines rise up is what I just heard. Rise up out of this um attachment to ego consciousness. It is your ego that is telling you that you um that you have to stay attached to this person or you'll lose them. It is an imbalance of, and I don't want to start bashing the ego right now because it's, I mean, it does get a bad rap, but it is our responsibility to balance all these pieces of ourselves. All right. So you have to bring your, your ego into balance with your higher self and um, realize that letting go of your divine masculine right now is the best thing to do because it's, it's helping them get the message. It's helping them come to terms with what's been really going on with all of this fatal attraction, with all of this cheating, this other people, you know, third parties um, and whatnot, karmic partners and all that stuff. It, they're really not going to get the lesson or get the message if we're still hovering around them like this hummingbird. You know what I mean? And honestly, you're not going to get the message either. You're not going to be able to move forward if you're still hovering around them it, while they're in this state. This is not healthy. <laughs> it's not healthy, guys. Okay, and finally, we have card number 46. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Um, detachment comes through working with the triggers. As the triggers come up, face them, okay? Because they are at, they are the puzzle pieces that the universe is handing to you saying, here, this is a piece of you that is incomplete. This is a piece of you that needs to heal. Collect those pieces and put your puzzle back together, Divine Feminine. Don't worry about him or her. Don't worry about your divine masculine. Stop focusing so much on their pieces and focus on yours. Uh, honestly, there, 
there, I was hoping that there would be some big old profound message on how to detach, but it's really just that simple. Just detach and focus on yourself. Take the energy that you're put, you're putting forth towards them and instead put it towards you. And I'm not saying don't think about them at all. You're going to think about them once and you'll know you're really detaching because then the universe will start to ramp up all of the, um, all the synchronicities. Like I know once I really started to detach, um, once I accepted the fact that, yeah, I'm, he is my, you know, a divine partner and all that, but I do need to detach from him. Once I came to terms with that man, his name was everywhere. I got an email today, um, at 111 <laughs> with his first name. I mean, it was someone different. I mean, it was about someone completely different, nothing connected to him personally, but it was his name. The person of the person that this message was related to, this email was related to, was his name at 111 in the afternoon. Like, <laughs> but see, the universe is gonna do that to see, to test you, to see if you're ready, to see how attached you are. How do you react when you cross paths with your twin in some way? How do you react when you see their name somewhere or you see something that reminds you of them? Are you going to be triggered again? Or are you going to be like, oh, hey, that's nice. And move on with your day. You know what I mean? But the name of the, the, you know, the, the game here is to put your pieces back together. Divine feminine, please. There really is no big old profound message here other than it's time for you to heal yourself and stop worrying so much about them because we can't heal them for them, okay? All right, so um, I'm going to get some clarifiers here. All right, spirit. Please bring forward the best clarifiers for this, for the divine feminine in detaching. How do we detach? Please bring some clarifiers. Best messages for the divine feminine at this time. How do we detach? Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, so for card number eight, two cards, please, Spirit. One. Oh no, that's too many. Here we go. All right. So the first card we have to clarify the alchemist here is the star. And this is absolutely about reconnecting with yourself. What do you and, and reconnecting with that true wish, that true desire. Like what do you really wish for? What do you really want? You're not gonna be able to manifest what you want if you don't know what it is. And you're not going to be able to know what it is if, you, if you've got spending all this time and energy focusing on your external reality and your twin and focusing so heavily on what's not working for you instead of focusing on what you really want. Yeah? Because honestly, you're not, if you don't understand what it is that you want your divine masculine to be, if you don't understand what it is that you truly desire in a divine partner, you're never going to get it. <laughs> How can the universe bring it to you if you don't know what you want? And we have the Page of Swords here. Um, mm -hmm. All right, divine feminine. I'm just going to say it. Stop spying on your divine masculine. Stop it. It's not helping you. I know I had to. I went through a moment where I disconnected from him on social media, um, but I was still going to his profile and looking at what he was posting. Well, that's not detachment, is it? <laughs> you know? So instead, at one point, it came to a point where it was like, okay, look, Eric, just stop looking. It's to stop. It's not helping you. It's keeping you attached to this situation. And instead of focusing on what my true wish is, what I really want and desire out of a love, a romantic partnership, out of a, um, um, a divine counterpart, instead of focusing on this, I'm focusing on what my twin is right now. He's still in that false 
that false self representation representation still focused on this instead of focusing on this and as the alchemist says with the law of attraction what you focus on you will receive and so as i focused on this i got more and more and more and more of it instead of focusing on this yes Okay, so I'm seeing here that these profound messages may come through the clarifiers. <laughs> All right, next we have card 28. Um, this is the, yeah, I'm going to say this is the detachment card. That's what I heard when I said it. Whoops. Oh, these two. Okay, so we've got the moon here. It's not what you think, Divine Feminine. You're reaching out because you feel like you have to. Because it looks like, because it looks like this Divine Masculine really isn't, but isn't really like reaching back or anything. But, the, but if you remember, I didn't notice that he was, hand, I didn't notice until just, until this reading that he's actually holding that, we'll call it a jar. He's holding it in his hand. I thought it was on a table. But you see, that's the point. It's not what it looks like, Divine Feminine. Detachment is not what it seems. On the surface, it seems it seems like you're completely moving on. You're never going to see this person again. You can completely cut them out of your life, and that's just the end of it. But that is not what detachment is. Detachment is uh, a moment for you guys to just breathe and recenter and come back to you and figure out who you are again right and we have the high priestess you're into it i mean ladies and gentlemen y'all know the, the your y'all know your intuitions like the back of your hand why aren't you listening we have been saying this to you the universe has been saying this to you i mean Detachment is not what it is not the end. Just just let it go. Stop reaching out to him. He needs to be the one or she needs to be the one to reach back now. So you just got to you just got to take a step back and stand in your power. That is all you need to do, divine feminine. That is all you need to do. And you need to come into the knowingness because the high priestess knows all she doesn't necessarily tell all though but she sure as shit knows it she stands in her power divine feminine you need to connect with your power you need to stand in your power and the only way you can do that is if you take your inter your 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 attention inward and focus on cultivating that power and once you've got that power down and you're standing in it and can't nobody mess with you, guess who's going to come right back? Mm -hmm. All right, spirit, let's talk about fatal attraction. There it is. Woo! Well, look at that. We've got the ace of wands. <laughs> That's no surprise. There definitely is... There definitely is strong sexual attraction here, sexual compatibility, sexual chemistry, okay? But the problem is right now, the situation is toxic, okay? So even though you're detaching, you're detaching because it's toxic, not because you don't have this connection with this person. So understand that. But you don't want, but you don't want to be intertwining with that. Okay, it, it, just because you're detaching does not mean that the, the, uh, the, the, the passion and the lust and the desire is going to go away. If anything, it's going to get stronger because the two of you will have healed to a greater extent. You, have be, you will become more of who you truly are. And if you think you're attracted to this person now, imagine what they're going to imagine the attraction, what the attraction is going to be like when you guys aren't toxic anymore, when we're not toxic anymore, when we're in our, when, when, when the divine feminine is standing in her true authentic divine feminine power and when the divine masculine is standing in his true divine feminine uh, divine masculine power 
think about how flipping gorgeous he's going to be then if you think so now. And vice versa. Uh, and on the flip side, think about how gorgeous you're going to be, Divine Feminine. But the only way to reach it is if you detach and work on healing yourself. See, just keep going. Just keep swimming. Y'all know that's my just keep swimming card, the nine of wands. You just have to persevere through it. Because the passion, you guys, the passion is here. The chemistry is here. And it ain't going nowhere. So just keep going. Let go. You have to let go of this toxic element. Because also, think about it this way. Your external, no matter who, everything in, in the physical realm is a, um, is, a, is, a, is a reflection of your internal world, of your internal reality, right? So if you are attracting or attracted to this toxic version of your twin, think about what's going on in your internal environment that is leading you to be attracted to that person. You have to be able to take responsibility for what you experience in your world, okay? And in order to fix anything, if there is something you find in your external reality that you do not find deem desirable, you have to be the one to turn inside and fix it. You can't go running around telling everybody else to fix themselves just to suit you. Uh-uh, it don't work that way, boo-boo, all right? You've got to turn inward and fix this, heal this for yourself, or you will continue to attract this. <laughs> regardless of whether it's a situation with your divine your your divine counterpart or like your brother or sister or like your best friend or like a job or whatever you have to be able to take take a step back and say whoa all right what's going on internally that is helping this come into my life like now like why what's going on with my vibration that i'm attracting this right now okay okay next we have card number 46 putting the pieces back together Two cards, please, spirit. This one. Judgment. Yes. And do y'all see, do y'all see how that flipped out and is facing you right now? Look at that. The universe is calling for you to put your pieces back together. You have to be the one to do it, Divine Feminine. And you are, or at least you're going to be. You're starting to get it. That's what I'm picking up here. You really are starting to get it. And honestly, I want to tell, I just, I want you to know, don't beat yourself up. Okay. No one is saying that you should be like, you should just detach like that and everything's good. No, it's going to take some time. It's really going to take some time to, to be fully detached, to come to a point where you can look at this situation from a strictly observant point of view and be like, huh, well, look at what's happening over there. That's interesting. No investment, no emotional involvement, just watching it, just observe. But what the chariot is also speaking to here is moving forward in your life towards that which is fulfilling for you. And in, and in detaching and putting your pieces back together and becoming a whole, much a more whole and complete being, you will have the clarity and the drive to move forward with what you're passionate about, move forward with what your heart truly desires and what your soul is calling for you to do in this life. Okay, regardless of whether your twin is in your life or not, you still have a mission. And you don't have to be connected with your twin to serve your mission. Finally, the clarifiers for, mm -hmm. for card number 52, we have the Queen of Pentacles. We have the Page of Cups. And yeah, we have the Two of Swords as well. I'm going to stop there for that. But um, give me a second. So with the Queen, with the queen of Pentacles here, this is you, Divine Feminine. This is us. This is who we are in the physical realm. We are wifey material. We are 
um, good parents, good spouses. We want to create a loving and unconditionally loving and comfortable and safe home for our families. Um, conformity though is what's coming forward here with this. So it's almost like a, it's almost like a twisted version of the divine feminine when it's associated, when it's clarifying this card here, number 52. Um, and that's not fair. It's like we, it's like the divine feminine has been forced to accept this whole unconditional love um, concept, but then it's twisted because we don't do it for ourselves. We do it for everyone else except for ourselves. And the Queen of Pentacles is say is asking you to come home to you. Treat yourself the way you want to be treated. Give yourself the unconditional love that you've been giving everyone else. And in doing and hello, what just was just and if you're giving yourself unconditional love, you're giving yourself the right to detach from toxic situations regardless of who they are to you. And then we have the page of cups here. Okay. So yes, you want to, you want to be able to extend that offer of love. You want to be able to extend that communicate that communication to your divine masculine, but you can't do it if you're not in your authentic self. And the queen of pentacles is asking you to find your authenticity again. And do not do it within the scope of do not do it for the sake of reaching union with your divine masculine, having your divine masculine come back to you or what? No, do it for you. Um, I'm picking up some energy here from the two of swords. Some of you or some of us divine feminines, you're just you're you're refusing to you're refusing to make this decision. You're refusing to take the blindfold off. You're still looking this at this from a, a, a very much a blind point of view, but you're blinding yourself. You're not willing to look at the truth of the situation. I understand it's painful. I get it. It's very painful. It's very painful also to continue looking at your divine masculine this way, though. Which would you prefer? To, can you, to continue to see him as a toxic awful human being or do you want to let that go and focus on something else because remember what you focus on is what you will receive in your reality okay well there it is i hope that was helpful divine feminine um there was a lot of tough love in there but Y'all know me by now. I love you guys. I just want you to be better, the best that you can be. I tend to be very queen of pentacles-y. Well, I'm a Taurus and a Virgo rising. My sun sign is Taurus. Um, and with my Virgo rising, I can be very, very straightforward and blunt um, and to the point. But I was saying in one of the, um, I think it was the, the monthly reading for the second half of the month for Pisces. Was it Pisces? No, I think it was actually, I think it was Cancer. But the Queen of Pentacles came up and I was explaining how the Queen of Pentacles can be very stern. But it's from an unconditionally loving point of view. She, re she recognizes the value in um, really doing the work to achieve something. And so she'll push you to do that, to learn about that value. And so she can be, she can be very stern. Um, but again, she does it because she loves you and she wants to see you thrive. And quite frankly, divine feminine, I want all of us to thrive. I want every person on this human, on, on this human being, every human being on this planet to thrive. Sometimes you gotta take it when it's tough. But understand that through those tough moments are what's really going to make you just expand on it like crazy. It's the hardest challenges that we face that give us the, be the most payout a lot of the time. I know this is hard, Divine Feminine. I know it's hard to detach. I know it's hard to get wrapped up. Or it's easy to get wrapped up in the fear that this is never going to work out 
or they're never going to come back. But you just let all that go because really it's nothing but fear. That is your ego mind out of balance, projecting fear towards you in an effort to keep you safe. Don't get me wrong, but it's time to balance that now, guys. We got to balance that out. All right. All right, Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine. I love you all. And I'll see you later. <laughs> okay, bye-bye.